Where do our radio signals go? Very good question, AC. So radio signals travel in straight lines, right? Generally, most, certainly shortwave, right? What they call HF. It's not affected by things like, you know, rain, gravity, you know, trees and stuff like that, because the wavelength is very long. A 40 meter band, for instance, is from there to there, it's 40 meters long. So it's kind of bigger than a house. So HF isn't um, affected that much by buildings. But on the other hand, VHF, I used to say to Wendy, the VHF and UHF is, is sort of a walkie talkie frequency. It's the ones, you know, well, you're not a walkie talkie. It's got a little stubby aerial, that sort of thing. That's line of sight as well, but your signal will be bounced off things. So if you're in a city, you're lucky to talk to someone around the corner, you know, if you're on a walkie talkie, because your signals can bounce off things. And RF and our radio frequency has, has a habit of bouncing off three different things. Okay. It, we, it will reflect off a skyscraper, you know, for instance, with a glass, metallic film glass, you know, skyscraper, skyscraper, you'll, you'll reflect off that. You'll refract off the ionosphere, which we'll cover in a minute. And you'll defract, for instance, if your signal is, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're here and your friend is, is here, we, you get some diffraction. So the signal will sort of glance over the top that's called diffraction. So we've got straight lines. We've got reflection, refraction. Now refraction, by the way, is the same thing as, you know, if you put a straw in a glass or in a swimming pool, you know, you put, you put a broom in a swimming pool and it bends, doesn't it? Well, imagine if that was kind of infinitely variable, your broom could bend and come out the other side sort of thing. Because that's where I want to get to now. I want to talk about the ionosphere. Okay, I'll, I'll have to do a fairly, a fairly nice arc for you. All right. I'm referring to this book actually for the people doing the foundation exam, but this is good for you know any basic you know basic propagation. You know what, what's happening. So between seventy and four hundred kilometers, you need to know that above the Earth's surface is the ionosphere. Okay, and I'll just I'll put it like this. There's your ionosphere. That signal, if we're over here with our little transmitter, dee -dee -dee -dee, our signal can go up and it can refract through the ionosphere and come back down over the horizon, right? And that over the horizon, the maximum distance you can get on a single hop on a very low trajectory, right? Really low angle. You can get up to 4,000 kilometers on a single hop. That's about two and a half thousand miles. And incidentally, your signal will bounce again and go up again and so on and so forth. And if you listen to my live streams, for instance, on Fridays, you know, quite often we'll hear Roly and I'll be able to have a quick, you know, it's difficult, right? Because he's in New Zealand and I'm in the UK. But we can have a contact and say, hello, how are you doing today? And signal reports. And that's uh, Standby USA in Europe. Any Pacific, uh, VK, Australasia. This is M0XXT listening. Zulu Lima 1, BQD. Hey, Roly, about a 52, mate. Over. See you next time, buddy. Well done. The ZL1BQD, M0XXT. Over, over. But this is important because in this book, it talks about the ionosphere, so that's page 18, all right, and it refracts signals back down to the Earth. Oh, and it tell, tells us 4,000 miles and all that sort of thing. VHF is slightly different, okay? VHF in the main is just line of sight. However, there is something called sporadic E, right, which I'll do in a right, green colour. I'll just put it here. There is a layer of air, gas, if you like, which can be moist, warm air, which can get trapped and it can cause a duct. It's what it's called ducting. So the signal can go up and it can bouncy, bouncy. Well, it's a technical word. <laughs> bouncy, bouncy. And then come back down. Who knows where? All right. But the reason it's sporadic. It's because it is. 
We don't know when it's going to occur, but it's normally in the summer. OK, and that's called sporadic E, they call it. So that will happen. Sporadic E is generally on VHF and UHF, but you sometimes hear it on HF as well. So, for instance, this business with the ionosphere, where we go, you know, between 40, 70 and 400 kilometres, and we go up, you know, because in the main, this bit here is very often about seven or 800 miles away. That's where it's kind of popular. You know? But sometimes in the summer, you can get a really short hop and it will be landing here, which for me is from here to Leeds. You know, it's like, how did it do that? Because it didn't get the ionosphere. So it's what they call a bit of sporadic E sometimes. It signal goes up and it pops back down. It's quite interesting. Propagation is affected by time of day and by the seasons. So why do our signals refract here? It's because the sun's rays, the ultraviolet light energy, can knock an electron off a gas. And you get these free electrons knocking around in the ionosphere. And that is the thing that causes this kind of mirror thing to occur. It's absolutely fascinating. And depending on the strength of the sun, the time of day, the seasons, and a few other odds and ends, variables, sunspot cycles, and, and whatever else, is that not every frequency will actually do this bounce. The higher you go up in frequency, on the H, I'm talking about shortwave, HF, what we call it, high frequency, right up to 30 megahertz. The higher you go up, the sometimes the harder it is to achieve a contact anywhere. And they call that, that's when the band is closed. Nothing is happening. The band opens when this cyan line starts happening further up that you go. And then we have something, and they call it the maximum usable frequency, MUF. So at what point do our signals stop bouncing is the maximum usable frequency. OK, so I'm just going to check the syllabus now because it says here we have to recall that radio waves travel in, tr travel in straight lines, just as like when you've got a flashlight, a torch. We call it a torch in the UK, but the Americans call them flashlights. Um, it goes in a straight line, it doesn't start wiggling around everywhere. And then... Again, with a flashlight, if you double the distance between, you know, you and the wall where you're flashing your, your light, you double the distance, the amount of light hitting that wall will be reduced by a factor of four. OK, so you can see that every time we go further and further away, our signal gets less. Uh, we need to recall we've got refraction, we've got diffraction and reflected. Interesting enough, you know, when you're coming over a brow of a hill at night in a car, and you can see a car coming the other way. That is sort of diffraction. But I've got a funny feeling is what's actually happening is completely different wavelength, right? It's very, very high, very, very short, you know, nanometers. Uh, uh, light, same stuff, but it's light now. I've got a funny feeling it's hitting dust particles and things like that. But anyway, that's kind of diffraction, all right? Radio waves get weaker as they spread out. We've covered that. We talked about the maximum usable frequency because UHF and VH, um, VHF signals normally pass through the ionosphere. If the maximum usable frequency is at 20 megahertz and we're trying to bounce that signal at 30 megahertz, it will literally keep going. All right. So I don't know what the nearest star is to hit. Well, if there's a star 20 light years from here, they will just be receiving my very first transmissions. But anyway, here we are. Recall that the ionosphere comprises layers of gases, ionized gases, between 70 and 400. They always throw that in. So out of your 26 questions, you're going to get one of them. And it's mainly caused by ultraviolet rays. There's only three other things, we, four other things that we need to demonstrate that we can recall. Is that on HF, most communication relies on waves being refracted from the ionosphere. Worldwide, it says here, propagation depends on how well the ionosphere is working that day. And the band is said to be open when it supports, they, they use sky wave. We call it a skip zone as well, because if we're here and our friend is here, all right, 4,000 kilometers away, that's said to skip. Like when you skip a pebble, you know, across a pond. Right, not in the book, but I'll just uh, show you a bit of fun here now. 
So there's, there's one other thing I think mm, it would be nice for them to put in. We call it NVIS, Near Vertical Instance Skywave Propagation. But let's just draw another arc here. And we'll put my little antenna there. Lower down the frequency, like 80 meters and 40 meters. So that's like 3.7 megahertz, 7 point, just under 7.2 megahertz in the UK, it's from 7.2 to 7.3 in the USA. We've got this ionosphere here, which we'll put back in in this pinky color. All right. And between 70 and 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface. And then if we've got a fairly low to the ground dipole or something else, we'll be causing like a bubble of RF, you know, just sending out everywhere. We haven't got a Yagi now. We're not, we're not pointing it somewhere. We're just going, hello, can you hear me? Then I'll just sort of draw this circle here. We'll, we will call it low to the ground, uh, four or five meters, 20 feet, low to the ground dipole, 40 meters. Our RF will just go boom, like a balloon. It'll just, just do that. OK, now, interesting enough, there'll be a directly above us. OK, there's a kind of a hole because our RF isn't refracting. It's going straight through the ionosphere here. But at a slight angle, you will get this. Well, it doesn't actually you get this happening. All right. And let's just draw these. So during the day on 40 meters, this can happen. And then we can get, we get a strong pool, if you like, of RF between about 50 and let's say 500 miles. Then what happens during the day, because it's the wrong time of day, um, you don't need to know this for the exam, right? If you go too low of the, off the horizon, on 40 meters on the 40 meters during the day it'll go right through but interesting enough at night it will bounce so you can get dx at night and early in the morning anyway why was i showing you this it's because if you want to talk to someone within 50 miles of you okay and let's say 50 miles is that big all right, you're not going to be able to you'll be in like a dead spot and because you can't come back down. So then you have to try something else like VHF, you know, the walkie-talkie band. Incidentally, it's not all walkie-talkies. You can be on VHF and have very, very high gain antennas, easy to do 50 miles, uh, particularly in open countryside. Because the last thing before I go, all right, if you've got a hill and you are transmitting here with your walkie-talkie or whatever, right, and it doesn't matter whatever you, you want to do because you've got a friend here who wants to talk to you, how are you going to get your signal there? Because you've got this radio shadow. So best I can achieve here is this. Now, we did talk about diffraction. So there will be elements of some signal that will, you know, very small amounts will get to your friend here. But if he's too far away, he's not going to hear you at all. So then we go into the NVIS world. We can go, well, OK, if he's 50 miles away, we might be able to try 40 metres or 80 metres because, you know, we can get over the top. That's the point. We can get over the top of the mountain with that one there. Um, OK, that is an introductory starter package on propagation following this book here and that syllabus there. Like all these topics, they're enormous. I can only scratch the surface. And it's only fair for me to do that, but but with practice, and that's the fun of RF. Okay, not quite knowing. I was at my live stream the other day. I was just cruising around eight, uh, fifteen meter band, and all of a sudden I heard a very quiet JA from Japan, from here, you know, in uh, in Warwickshire. And I gave him a call, and I had a quick contact with Japan. No one else there. The band was almost closed, but I could hear Japan. Why could I hear Japan? Well, who knows? But that's just the fun and the delight of the science of amateur radio and radio propagation. Okay.
And it's a life learning thing. It's not an overnight thing. All right, I'm not expecting many people to watch this video, so maybe give me a like, maybe a comment, a nice, pleasant comment. All right, or subscribe, L, <laughs> push the vote out. But I'm in this for the clicks, so have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.